In this series of tutorials, I'm going to take a look at how we can take some motion capture data that's come in here using the Rococo motion capture suit and retarget this or apply it to a custom rig inside of Maya. Now, the workflow that Autodesk shows us for retargeting our data is usually only demonstrated using the basic human IK rigs and the quick rigs that you can create from inside of Maya, which is fine if that's what your rigging is, is from, but if you are creating your own custom rigs, then the process to take mocap data and apply it to a custom rig is not as straightforward, but it is very possible to do so. So the Rococo rig um, is just one of a number of less expensive, more kind of, kind of consumer level uh, motion capture suits uh, that you can purchase obviously for uh, your own purposes. And in this case here, what we have is uh, just a very basic sort of uh, kind of walk that's been created using it. Um, for, with Rococo, when the uh, file comes across here in FBX format, we get the joints, but it also creates this little sort of geometric skeleton as well, which we don't really want to keep. Um, and so here inside of Motion Builder, what we're going to do is just go ahead and come into our scene and right click on the stick man there and delete and confirm. And so that's just going to leave us with the joints. And uh, we have a little bit of a sort of a reference node here. Um, and so he's just really walking in place at the moment. One other thing that we want to pay attention to is the frame rate that we're working from here inside of Motion Builder. So currently I have this set to 24 frames per second. I've reduced this from its original frame rate, uh, which I believe was at 30 frames per second. And I just want to point this out because we want this to align with whatever we're using inside of Maya. So in Maya, I'm going to be animating at 24 frames per second. Here inside of Motion Builder, I will uh, set it to the same. Uh, it may move some of our keys onto non-integer keyframes, but that's stuff that we can fix later on. So all I would do at this point here is I'd want to save this scene out and just save it as a new version, um, pretty much. And I just called this new version the same thing as the previous one, except for now we'll just put joints on the end of it there, just so that we can um, acknowledge what we have saved from there. Uh, and therefore, now we can bring this inside of Maya. So if we take a look at the rig that I want to apply this to inside of Maya, this is a rig that I created for a human character. Uh, and I used the, uh, the script Rapid Rig Modular. Uh, Rapid Rig Modular is a, a script you have to pay for. Um, it's very good. I recommend it highly. And uh, there, is, there is also Rapid Rig Advanced and some other sort of free Rapid Rig stuff out there that you can use to create human style rigs. You could also be using um, advanced skeleton or other uh, procedurally generated uh, rigging solutions. So here we have inside of uh, Maya, again, I want to make sure that I set this to 24 frames per second. All right. And we're just going to open this up a little bit. I believe the number of frames that we had inside of Motion Builder was uh, comes up to well, 32 there. So we'll set this to 32 here. All right. Um, one thing I will point out, just as a point of difference, is that uh, everything here is made by Rapid Rig, except for all these joints that kind of connect up here into the face. This is all custom rigging that I did on top of the Rapid Rig. So if we were to go in here and uh, take a look at the comparison between the two skeletons that we have, I'll go in and I'll import in our joints uh, version here. And let's just see what we get. Right, so one thing that we notice right away is, of course, that the scale is different. That's not such a big deal, um, and it is something that I would recommend fixing right from the start if you can. So let's just go ahead and come into our front view here. We're going to select that root joint, and or I should call this the reference joint, not the root joint. And I'm just going to uh, grab this and scale this up until they are approximately sitting in the same respective areas, just so that there is a lot better correspondence between them. And it's Best if these two skeletons um, have a, they don't have to have an exact um, correspondence, but it's better the closer the correspondence is between them in terms of scale, in terms of proportion in general, all of those sorts of things. And also in terms of the number of joints being used, which is a bit of an issue here at the moment, because what you'll notice is that if we take, up the, take a look at the uh, rig from Rococo, we only have three spine joints. 
Whereas the rapid rig that we'd created, we have uh, a root and then we have one, two, three, four, five um, spine joints. So ultimately, uh, it would be better for us to be able to create some extra joints here on the Rococo rig, which I will discuss here in a moment. Um, it's not absolutely necessary, but if you want each of these controls on your uh, on, on the rig that you are retargeting to to receive some kind of input animation, then you would want there to be the same correspondence. So another thing too that kind of point out is that there is a little bit of a displacement of things. So if I look at the location of uh, the spine here on the Rococo rig compared to on my character, um, they're not quite in the same spot, nor, are, nor is where the shoulders are. And again, this is some proportional differences. Rococo is kind of creating this sort of hypothetical human uh, in this position. And as this character walks, we can take a look at um, what does what happens with that spine. You can see that it actually kind of doesn't, doesn't seem so stiff anymore. Sort of fits in there a little bit better. So you can mess around with this to see what works better um, in your solution, whether or not it's a good idea to take the, um, the first spine joint here and try to start to move that a little bit closer to create better alignment with the existing spine. Or um, likewise, also here with the shoulders, you know, is it a better idea to kind of take uh, this, uh, either the clavicles or this joint here, I think actually the clavicles would be better to grab and just move them forward a little bit so that the arms align. Um, again, this is one of those things where once we go through this process, it will be a good idea to do a little bit of comparison in terms of the results that you get. So if I were to move that there, let's just go with this for now and assume that it may work. All right, now those changes that I've just made um, ultimately may or may not appear on the entirety of the frames that I have. So uh, if I was looking at uh, this, joint movement here, for instance, that I, I moved in, translated um, in local axis Y. And I go into my graph editor and I just take a look at translate Y there. You can see I have a single point uh, there, which is there's no other translate Y there. So that should be actually occurring uh, for the entirety of the animation there. Likewise, probably for these clavicles as well. That was local translation Z. So again, yeah, so those would actually be occurring all the way through because there's no other keyframes here to compete with them. Okay, now with that done, we can take a look at how everything is going to align up here. Now, so you can see the Rococo rig, the one with the bigger joints, is uh, doesn't have quite the same number of joints as we have from Rapid Rig. Um, and all that means is that we can only uh, retarget the joint rotations here to the same number of uh, controls as equal to the rotations, which means that some of these controls here are not going to get um, motion retargeted to them. That's okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, if you wanted to, you could go through and create, uh, insert some joints in between here um, to try to better match the overall number of joints. And if I did that, if I inserted a joint between there just using the skeleton insert joint tool, um, then on that new joint, I would just want to use my expression editor to create um, sort of a rotation on that joint for X, Y, and Z uh, that is equal to um, the rotation on this joint plus the rotation on this joint divided by two. And that way it will give me the sort of perfect in-between amount of rotation between there. But I will leave that up to you as that's just a little bit peripheral to what we're doing here. So what we need to do in this case now is to uh, work from our Rococo rig and make sure that the Rococo rig has a uh, human IK uh, naming convention applied to it. So what we can do is uh, come in here to our rigging and we'll go to here under human IK, skeleton human IK, there we go. Um, and just sort of reset back and forth here so this thing properly loads in. All right, so what we're gonna to wanna to do is to come to our definition tab. Now we see that there's a characterization already been created. This may have been a bit of a holdover from something I've done before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete what I have on there. Um, otherwise, sometimes I might end up with something that I am uh, that I don't really need. And this may be the way that you see it as well. So what we're gonna start doing is to create a character definition. 
So we'll go and create character definition. Um, and just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna turn off uh, everything that's not the Rococo rig for right now, the way that I have this scene set up. So uh, to keep things very nice and simple, um, you are presumably familiar with how to create a character set inside of Maya, but we'll just make it uh, nice and straight, simple and straightforward. So uh, we would start with our head and I'll just right click on our head bone and say assign selected bone and then come into our neck and we'll grab our single neck joint here. I'll put that at the bottom there. And then um, if I have this nicely in T pose, we can just do one side at a time and it will mirror over. So I'll take our left shoulder and assign it there. Um, do our right arm, or sorry, left arm and forearm and just grab the wrist here. Now, um, if you have data that also has fingers and you could go in and add in the individual's finger rotations as well, but we don't need to worry about that in this case. Um, we'll grab our root and we'll put that here on the hips and then come in here to the spine uh, joint. We'll take our first joint there and right click assign and then come in here to the spine view and we are only, we're gonna have uh, one and two spine joints there. Obviously there's a lot more that you could add in if you had that many joints, but you don't. Um, now coming in here to the legs, very straightforward. And the ankle. And if we wanted to, we could also apply this one right here to reference as well. There we go. And now we have our character one. Um, and so that's what we're going to be working from there. Now, that's all well and good, and you may be familiar with how to create that. But in the next tutorial that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to set up the custom rig, which is going to be also found here inside of our, um, our rigging panel. Um, but that's a different process that's not entirely covered very well elsewhere. So that's going to be the cool new thing to take a look at. So I will see you in the next video.